Hey, what's going on you guys? Welcome to today's flow practice. We're gonna start off with a short warm up, as usual, just checking in with the body. Then we're going to break down five patterns that are gonna comprise our flow today. They're gonna require mobility and strength. So we're gonna check in with those patterns, make sure that they're strong, give you some tips on the mechanics, and then we're gonna take that and bring that into a short flow. So let's get started today. We're going to begin in a kneeling position. And what I want you to start with is just focusing on your feet. Going from a flexed foot kneel to a flat footed kneel. Back and forth, just a few times, rocking, bouncing, just trying to bring some mobility into the feet and ankles here. You can plant your fingertips ahead of your knees and begin to rock forward and back. Just bringing your knees down to kiss the ground and rock back up. If that's feeling good, you can take the hands away. Find that flexed foot kneeling position. Nice and tall solid core connection. There's going to be just a little backwards lean to make the knees light on the ground and then sucking back through the hips to come into a deep knee bend position. Trying to perch up on your heels, elongate your spine, and really try to squeeze your hamstrings and your calves. So this isn't just a passive position hanging out here, could be, but in our case we're trying to create some activation. And maybe you can feel that by adding just a little bit of a bounce. Keep working through that pattern just a few times. Great, now we're gonna go to a knee hand position. Wanna set this Position up very strong on hands and knees. Arms are locked out. Pits of the elbows are spun forward and pressing actively through the hands, spreading the shoulders across the back and creating length from the crown of the head to the tailbone. So make sure that you're not falling into the shoulders or collapsing in the midsection. Press in, elongate. From that strong position there, we can continue to create some mobility around the shoulder blades by sinking into the shoulders. Keep the arms straight, draw the shoulder blades together, feel a little squeeze there. That's retraction. And then pressing through your hands, press your upper back to the ceiling and feel your shoulder blades spread across your back. Protraction. Retract and protract. Again, this is just for the sake of building some mobility, building uh, some awareness and connection with your shoulder blades. You want to make this action smooth and hopefully get a pretty good range of motion here. To add a little bit more strength to it, you can step into a plank position. I like to widen my hand placement slightly, keep my weight shifted forward, and then dropping into the shoulders and pressing through. Retract, press into protraction. Let's do five more. Return to knee hand position. And in between sets here, it's always a good idea to give your wrists some love. And 
And as we set back up, strong knee hand position, very strong and rooted, stable. We're gonna go into a diagonal reach. So I'm gonna take my left arm reach diagonally underneath my body and set my shoulder down to the mat. Then I'm gonna take that same arm, rotate open, even allow the same side leg, hip to rotate open, reach. Bring the arm down, reach under, rise up, open, open, Three more. Switch to the other side, six reps. Excellent, bring it down. One more drill in our knee hand position. Setting up here. Strong limbs, strong core. Then extending the opposite arm and leg. Bringing the elbow and knee to touch. Extend and touch. Let's do eight more. Other side, strong knee hand position, my left arm, my right leg, reach, and connect elbow and knee, 10 reps. Actually throw one more drill in here from our knee hand position. Picking up one leg, taking the hip into extension, pressing the sole of the foot up, reaching up towards the ceiling. Keep those shoulder blades spread and keep this out of the lower back and the back extending, but really try to make it come from the glute, extending the hip. And then be reaching over. Lift, reach. Maybe taking this hip through a range of motion here, lifting and reaching. Switch sides. Lift and reach.
coming in, just warming up with a few presses here, sinking in, allowing the elbows to bend, but maintaining the shoulder stability so the shoulders are drawing down away from the ears. And as you bend the elbows back, lowering the face towards the ground, pressing back up to those locked arms. So really want to avoid shrugging the shoulders here, keeping the neck long, leaning forward, continuing to press in to the ground through the hands. Shift your weight back, allow your elbows to contact the ground, leaning forward and back. As you lean forward, press into the hands. Forward, press into the hands. Begin to lift the elbows. Press up. Sit back. Drop the elbows. Try to keep those elbows squeezing inward. Shift forward. Press into the hands. Lift the elbows. Press up. Do three more of these circular presses. We're going to see this in our flow. Lift, stabilize, press up, sit back, drop, shift forward, press into the hands, lift the elbows, press up. Last one. Flip over by an inverted crawl position, just shifting the weight forward and back a few times. The further you sit the hips forward, the more you take your shoulders into extension and find a good stretch. Two more. One. Shift back, keep pressing in, pull forward, find that stretch. And then centering your weight, lifting your hips off the ground, find our inverted crawl position. One arm is gonna reach across, plant, and hold. Reach back, inverted crawl, shift weight, free up one hand, reach across, plant, and bring it back. We'll do three more each side. Last piece of our warm up here. We're gonna go into our deep squat, mobilizing the hips with weight shifting, moving around. Hands can be in contact with the ground, giving extra support. And we're starting to reposition the feet and shift the weight in different directions. from that deep squat, allowing the hips to elevate and are finding a deep hinge with a relaxed spine. Lower to deep squat, lift to deep hinge. As you come up into the deep hinge, maybe setting the hands out in front of the feet, 
and shifting the weight forward, bearing some weight in the locked out arms. Last time for our deep hinge. Pull down into the deep squat. And now we'll start transitioning into building our flow. We're starting off with a crawl rolling transition. And this will be familiar, all these patterns will be familiar from our warm up series. But now we're gonna go from our knee hand position, tuck the toes, lift the knees to hover off the ground, take us into the foot hand crawl, and then picking up one leg, pulling it up into extension and then reaching over. Can come all the way through, can even come and finish in an inverted crawl. Probably gonna stop right about here. Take it back, foot hand crawl. I'm gonna stick with the same side leg for four more reps. Elevate, reach, and roll over. Five reps on the other side. Lift, reach, and roll. Gonna do one more set of 10, this time alternating sides. Strong knee hand position. Tuck the toes, lift the knees, foot hand crawl position. Last one. Next pattern we're gonna go into is a circular press. So we're just gonna expand on this movement that we did. Loading the hips back. Maybe at this point, pressing in through the feet and the hands to lift the knees. Drop the elbows. Shift forward. Weight presses into the hands. Press up. And maybe finishing in a spinal extension before lifting the hips, pressing through, protracting those shoulders. Sitting back, drop, shift forward, press in, press up, spinal extension.
One more. Take a moment to rest, breathe, counter stretch. Let's do one more set of five there. Setting this up here. It's back. Hover. Drop. Shift. Press. It's a very challenging movement, but you can self-spot by keeping weight on your knees. The most important part of this movement is maintaining a stable shoulder girdle. So making sure that your shoulders don't round forward here, but really trying to scoop the shoulder blades, draw them down your back, and maintain that stability as you press all the way through into that protracted position. Our next movement is gonna be another press. Now, lifting the hips up, like our deep hinge, and now going into a pike press. So from here, shifting the weight forward, allowing the arms to bend, and the crown of my head is going to come out past my hands. Maybe tap the ground, but you're going to work within your range of motion. Find this A-frame position. Nice stretch here as you sink your weight back. But as you get ready for your press, shifting forward, continuing to press strong through the hands as the elbows bend. Pike press. Let's get two more. One more set, three or four reps, it's up to you. Play around with this movement. You're looking to figure out your range of motion and your variation of this pattern. One more pattern that we're going to go through as we build our flow. Since we're already in this crawling position, and we've been working on this back loading, shifting the weight back and then forward, we're going to shift the weight back and spring forward to jump into a deep knee bend position. Jumping the feet in, coming up. Deep knee bend position. From this deep knee bend position, just like our warm up, we've had the option to lower to kneeling. Or begin to add some rotation.
Let's get one more set of five in this pattern. Foot hand crawl, back load, jump forward, deep knee bend. We practice each one of those patterns. Hopefully you've got a good baseline for each one of those movements and you've made the modifications to make them work better for you. And the idea there is to slow things down, get a sense of the movement and build some strength. And now we'll take some time to bring these movements into a flow. So as we work on this flow, we're going to want to cut the reps short and be able to smoothly, quickly transition from one pattern to the next. We'll take the first round or two slow and then start to fall into a rhythm and find that quality of fluidity and smoothness to piece these movements together, all right? So we're starting off with the crawl, foot hand crawl, rolling transition. Set it up and I'm gonna go for two reps. One. two, and sinking back, circular press, dropping down, shifting, pressing up, and back. One more. Rising the hips up. Finding that deep hinge position, two pike presses. Sinking back, two times, springing forward, deep knee bend. I'll add the extension reach. Back to where we started, getting ready for the foot hand crawl rolling transition. Let's go back through another round, just a little bit faster. One, two, sink back. One. Two, rise up, high press for two, one, two, sink down, spring forward, one, Next two rounds, we're gonna increase the speed just a little bit and do two smooth consecutive rounds. Starting off, foot hand crawl position and reach, roll, one, two, sink back, one, Two, one, two, one, two, one, 
2. Finish up the practice today with three consecutive rounds. At this point, you've got experience with the movements. You've had some time to figure out how they fit together. Now take these next three rounds to really polish the flow. Set and begin.
can keep exploring some gentle movements to continue to cool down, promote some recovery. One of the beautiful things about the flow practice is that it is challenging, but it's pretty gentle on your body as well. So you can continue on with some of these movements, slow things down, stretch, figure out how these dots connect, and just keep moving. I want to thank you for joining me for today's practice. I hope you feel as good as I do. Uh, if you like the video, please subscribe to the channel. Please give it a thumbs up, comment, and let me know what you want to see more of. I love sharing the practice of natural movements, and I want to know more about what you guys are interested in. So once again, thank you as always for the support, and we'll see you in the next video.